So I watched Steve Bash's video on Berserker Barbarians, and he said something in it that I took issue with. He talks about how Frenzy is bad because you get a level of exhaustion, which, fair enough, it's not really something you want to deal with. But then at the end, he says this. Frenzy in a vacuum actually isn't that bad until you also realize that you're giving up other class features like the ability to shoot lightning out of your fucking chest as a bonus action. Okay, stop right there. Well, Z, now we have a problem. You just said you don't even think Frenzy is bad innately, but it is bad when you have to forego better abilities for it, specifically Sea Storm Aura. If you just hadn't said that, I would have left well enough alone and go procrastinate on a different project, but now I have to talk about this. So let's start off by looking at Storm Herald. Alright, at level 3 you get a Storm Aura, and depending on the aura, you get different effects to cause as a bonus action. Desert Aura deals 2 fire damage to each creature, and it scales like so. Tundra gives 10 HP to anyone you want in the aura, and it scales the same way. And C gives you lightning out of your fucking chest. This aura makes one enemy make a deck save, and they take 1d6 lightning damage on a fail, or half on a success. And it scales... Wait, are you serious? Not at all until level 10? I mean, it might be on the strong side if it scaled to 2d6 earlier, but it's not like you're getting anything amazing before to hold you over for the next 7 fucking levels. But that's not even the main problem, no, the main problem is that it's completely fucking worthless! You use a bonus action to deal just one damage most of the time. Before multi-attack, you'd be better off dual wielding hand axes. So your opinion on this ability is garbage. Oh, you want proof? I'll give you fucking proof. Alright, so the lightning force is a deck save, and then it has two possible branches. Either they fail or succeed the save. The damage is 1 through 6 or 1 through 3, so a d6 or a d6 half. For simplicity's sake, we're gonna start with 50%, an equal chance to fail or succeed. If it's an equal chance either way, we don't even need to do any fancy math yet, we can just count. So 1, 2, 3, 4. We have a 4 in 12 chance to roll 1 for the damage, which is 1 third, which is 33%. Next up, 1, 2, 3. We have a 3 in 12 chance to roll 2 for the damage, which is 1 fourth, which is 25%. To roll 3, we have a 2 in 12 chance, which is 1 sixth, which is about 16.67%. And for 4, 5, and 6, we have a 1 in 12 chance to roll, which is, give or take, about 8.33%. As you can see, you'll be rolling ones most of the time. Far from ideal. But we're not done yet. Oh, no, 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 no. We can calculate the damage distribution for any save ratio using this formula. Fail chance times fails damage chance, plus success chance times success damage chance. And now I have to ramble about nothing for a bit because I can't even speed up this recording any further. Alright, let's try again, this time giving the enemy a 70% chance to fail the save and a 30 to make it. Plugging in the numbers for 1 damage, that's 70% times 1 6 plus 30% times 3 6. The chances to roll a 1 here and here. Calculating this, we get 7 over 60 plus 9 over 60 equals 16 over 60, which is 4 over 15, around 26.66%. Moving on to 2 damage, the probability for the fail is gonna stay the same, but here we do 2 sixths, because we have a 2 in 6 chance to do 2 damage if they succeed the save, which brings us to 21.66. Repeat this for 3 damage, where you only have a 1 in 6 chance to roll it on a success, so after you calculate it, it's 16.66%. And finally, we have an equal chance for 4, 5, and 6, because we can't even roll that damage on a successful save, which is around 11.67%. And our damage output for 70% fail chance is... shit. Okay, let's try the best case scenario you could unrealistically get, one where they have a 90% chance to fail the save. When we're done calculating, your numbers are gonna look something like this. That's fucking atrocious. Yeah, the higher numbers are a bit more common, but this is the best case scenario. More realistically, your numbers are gonna look something like this. That's horrible! This is the true strike of class abilities! And as you can clearly see here, we'll be rolling a 1 most commonly, no matter what the fail-success ratio is. What? Mathematical proof not enough for you? You want a practical example? Fine, give me 20 minutes and I'll give you all of them. I'm using GameMaker 2 because that's what I'm used to right now. We're gonna make a map of 6 indexes for the damage, then simulate a roll for the save and for the damage. Once we have it, we'll add plus 1 to the appropriate index to count how many times we roll that damage. So let's run it and see the results. Yeah, shit. Okay, not a problem, I'll fix it real quick. There we go, that's a nice visual representation. Every time I hit space, it's gonna roll a new set. Right now, we have a 50-50 split for the save. Sometimes we can get lucky and roll higher, but even so, the average damage is between 150 and 350. This is a realistic estimate of the damage you'll deal with lightning in a long fight. If we increase the fail chance to 75%, we're gonna average higher more often, but we're still not gonna even get up to 4. If we're lucky, our lightning will deal like 35 damage over 10 rounds of combat. And if we reduce the fail chance to a realistic 40%, you can see how uncommonly you roll on the higher end of the D6. And now I'm gonna increase the bonus section count to 100 so we can get a more precise average. On an even split, it's gonna be around 2.5. On 75 to 25, it's gonna be in the ballpark of 3, and on 40 60, you're really gonna struggle to break 3 damage average. And you might think a little guaranteed damage is not bad, but Z did compare this ability to Frenzy, so let's take a look at the damage output when we get to make an extra weapon attack. 
And you know what? We have a perfectly good program right here. Let's just add to it. So now I'm gonna simulate an attack roll. Generate a random number between 1 and 20, add two hit modifier, compare AC, crit on 20, miss on 1, advantage toggle, and we're attacking with a great axe. Quick note, I am using the maximized crits rule, but if you want to go vanilla, just mentally slap a minus 6 to the crit damage. That'll average it out. Let's see how it goes. Oh, God damn it! There we go, let's get through this quickly. When we have an equal 2 hit and dex fail chance, you can see that we're usually rolling above the maximum lightning average damage with our frenzy attack. Sure, sometimes the damage is low because of the misses, but it can also get pretty damn high. Best part is, we have built-in ways to improve our hit chances. If we reckless attack for advantage, we're gonna hit more often and our average damage is gonna increase. Oh, and let's say you picked up Great Weapon Master. Your average damage is gonna go through the fucking roof. Even with the minus 5 to hit. No, I didn't cheat and leave the penalty out, it's in the code. Because of advantage, you'll still be hitting a bunch and the plus 10 damage is worth it. And as you gain levels, your 2 hit and especially the damage is gonna scale much better than lightning. So once you get some decent modifiers- HOLY SHIT! Uh, I believe this is technically called a lot of damage. Putting this in game terms, let's take a look at the damage potential. This is the damage you get from these two abilities, and Frenzy clearly has a few points on Storm Aura. For the sake of comparison, let's add the damage from our normal attack as well. At level 4, we can already pick up Great Weapon Master, and here's the real strength of Frenzy. Because it lets you make one additional weapon attack, it gets the benefit of all attack buffs, which Lightning doesn't. Which is why in this example, Herald Mag's damage barely meets the minimum damage from Berserker. So if we are attacking with something like a Flame Tongue, the bonus damage from it will be applied twice for Berserker, but only once for Herald. Meanwhile, the only non-homebrew way to buff lightning is increase your con, and that only increases your chance to do full damage, and it's pretty hard to do anyway. And just to round things up, compare the damage increase when you get your normal extra attack. So let's review. Frenzy has a high minimum damage because of the modifiers, high max damage because of the weapon dice and crits, it'll scale with your primary stat a lot earlier, any attack buffs applied to it so it's pretty versatile, and you can even use it to grapple. And yes, grappling is OP, but that's a different video. The only real downside is exhaustion. Whereas in comparison, all lightning has going for itself is guaranteed damage and not giving you exhaustion. It's cool, thematically, I guess. Oh, but it has better range than an attack, unless the Berserker is using a reach weapon. And as I can't stop banging on about, the damage is pitiful and scales horribly. After you're done Tesla coiling, no exhaustion. Yeah, as a Berserker you'll be exhausted by the time you finish your race, but at least you'll put down the enemy in a reasonable time frame. <sighs> Listen, Storm Herald is cool and all for a thematic character, and yeah, it can be fun to play Tor or Light or something, but when it comes to game mechanics, it's just so underwhelming any way you slice it. You get a bit of a damage boost at level 3, but it's nothing compared to the Berserker. You might reduce the damage to yourself and allies instead, but again, Spirit Guardian protects allies much better. At level 6, you get a damage resistance to the damage type of your aura, but you could just go Bear Totem and get resistance to basically everything except Mind Flares and Mouthy Bards. Level 14 is where you get some great stuff, but that's too little too late if you ask me. Every class and subclass has advantages and shortcomings, and sure, maybe Storm Herald gives some situational benefits that you'll be glad to have when it comes up, but the other barbarian subclasses just do their job better and more consistently. Getting exhaustion is a bitch, but I don't think it's bad to have it as part of the ability. Otherwise, you just get better consistent damage output than probably any other class, for free. The bigger problem with the ability is that you can get exhausted without even doing anything, if you start the frenzy and it ends before your next turn. No hate to Z, I usually love his videos, but this time I think he really dropped the ball when talking about the mechanics. And it's just a bit disappointing because he's proven he knows how to make good use of game mechanics and numbers. Anyway, that's about it. If you like this video, share it around. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I, I, I got a proposition for you. You, you. you hated this video, right? Well, you don't want more to be made, right? Just, just hit that dislike button. Just smash it so he doesn't make more.